Well, hidden in the president's massive health care law is a provision that requires employers to provide a special room for new mothers. Many mothers argue they need the space in order to go back to work, but is the government getting too involved in private business? We're talking about a room devoted to breastfeeding. Employment law attorney Kelly Sandin joins us now from Chicago. And on the other side of this fair and balanced debate is attorney Jonas Billboard. Thank you both uh, for joining us. Thank you. All right, Thank Kelly, you. I want to start with you. Uh, I would imagine the first concern for most employers is going to be time and cost they've got to devote to making this happen. Uh, how much will it cost them? Well, that depends on the size of the space that they need, but it's not a specific requirement that the space has to be a certain size. I think they said four by six, that they want an electrical outlet, a chair. So it's unsubsidized. The, the employer has to make that decision themselves, but it can be costly more on the side of the unpaid breaks and also the idea that other employees that have special needs aren't getting these break rooms, and so there's going to be problems there as well. Yeah, and John, let me ask you about that. I mean, if you, if you do believe that this is necessary for this specific group, where do you draw the line? I mean, how many groups are going to be able to demand special treatment? Well, we already do take care of other employees that have certain disabilities. For example, Title VII requires that we do that. So I don't think this is going to place any undue burden or cause different employees to be fighting with each other. And in fact, if you read the language of the law, it's pretty nondescript. As the other guest said, it doesn't require a large space. You need a chair, a table, an outlet. And if you don't employ more than 50 people, you can actually get a hardship exemption so you don't have to do it at all. So I don't think it's going to cause a war between employees. Well, Kelly, you touched on that a little bit. You talked about how this could impact other employees. Do you think this could have a negative impact on morale? I do, because men are never going to qualify for it. Women that can't have children, mm -hmm. can't breastfeed, aren't going to qualify it. And this actually only covers what are called exempt employees, so hourly mm -hmm. workers, not salaried employees, they're not going to be covered by it. So I think it could be a morale problem, especially if you have some individuals that abuse this and go sit in the room, hang out, are longer off the clock than they need to be. I do think it's going to cause problems. What about diabetics that want a special area that need to have insulin throughout the day? They don't get to go off the clock unpaid for a period of time. And there's other medical conditions that I somewhat respectfully disagree with Jonna that they're not getting the accommodation that this law provides for breastfeeding women. Well, Jonna, I want to quickly give you the last word here. We've heard about a lot of negative things, but is it possible that in some way this would actually benefit employers? It absolutely should. And you know what it's going to do, and I don't know how to say this delicately, it's going to take breastfeeding and, and expressing milk out of our faces. We can't multitask that at work. You know, we can meet with clients and we can blackberry out while we're sitting at a conference table, but you can't meet with a client and breastfeed or express milk. So we have a safe, sanitary place for employees to do this. We're all going to be more productive, so we don't have to feel uncomfortable having to see it, and the women who need to do it don't have to feel uncomfortable having to do it in our faces. All right, Kelly and Donna, thank you very much for a fair and balanced debate. Thank you. Thank you.